Hello, welcome back to the devlog series for my 2D survival game. So in the last episode, we got the procedurally generated world up and running along with all of the art and a few enemies. In this episode, I'm going to get the inventory system set up and get everything ready so I can start implementing the crafting system later on. First off, I was going to call this video creating an inventory system for my survival game, but it turns out someone else had literally the exact same idea as me, so we had to go with something a little different. Oh, and by the way, we're a little bigger this time now than last time. When I posted my previous video, I had less than 50 subscribers, and now we have more than 300. So thanks for that, and thanks for all the support and everything. So the basic idea of what I'm going to do is to make a UI in the bottom that can fill with the items you collect. Then in the next video, I'll make a system where you can use the materials you gather to craft things like pickaxes, axes, swords, shovels, things like that. Also, don't judge my art, because I made this with a mouse. So I just finished the UI for the inventory system, and I think it looks pretty good. It's pretty exciting because I've always wanted to make an inventory system for a game, and now I'm finally doing it. At first I had a lot of trouble with the pixels getting kind of distorted in the UI, but I think it turned out pretty nice. I just did a little more work on it, and you can now pick up items, and when your inventory is full you can't pick up anymore. A lot of the logic for the inventory system came from a Bracky tutorial that I watched. And I made a few more changes, I zoomed out the camera a little bit because a lot of people said that it was too zoomed in before. And I also made an extremely ugly and huge health potion you can see. Um, oh yeah, also, you can now click on items in your inventory to use an item. You can't see me clicking because my cursor is hidden, but trust me, I'm clicking on stuff. I also outlined the player to make him stand out a little better from the background. I put a lot of time into writing the code for this inventory because I really wanted it to be scalable later and I wanted the code to be reusable. I also wanted to be able to build off of the inventory system later. Basically how it works is that the inventory class handles all of the changes to the player's items and the inventory UI class handles displaying everything to the screen. As of right now, each of the four inventory slots you see can hold a single item, and clicking on the item causes it to be consumed. I spent some time drawing some sprites for hearts, and I added in a health UI. Currently, the only way to take damage in this game is by pressing the spacebar, which is I guess like the player stabbing himself with his spear or something, but I only did that for testing purposes. I also made a much nicer health potion, and when you use it, uh, well, nothing happens because I haven't added that yet. But before I did that, I decided I would add in a custom cursor so you guys can actually see what I'm clicking on. Also, look at that disgusting looking spear. What even is that? I'm gonna fix that too. So I just fixed the spear, I think it looks a lot better now, and now if you take some damage and collect the health potions, they will now heal you, which I think is pretty cool. Right now you can't see it in the game, but I'm working on a system right now so the player can equip items. Right now you can see that the equipment list is empty, but if I click on the spear, it will show up in the list. If I collect a sword and click on that, it will replace the spear in the list and the sword will be returned to the inventory. At this point, I wanted to work on something a little bit different, so I took a sample song that I made a few weeks ago and I started trying to implement music into the game. I needed a representation for my audio source, so here's this little singing slime. I started experimenting with this thing called 3D sound, where it sounds like the music is coming from the direction the slime is in. You might need headphones to hear the effect well, but I'll let you listen to it. And I think this is kind of a cool effect that I might use somehow in my game. Also, I don't know if you guys know about this, but there's this thing called the Doppler effect, which is this thing where the frequency of a wave, like sound or light, changes if either you or the source are moving relative to each other. I don't know if you've ever heard an ambulance coming towards you and then leaving, but the Doppler effect causes the pitch of the siren to sound higher when it's coming towards you, and lower when it's moving away. Anyway, it turns out you can use the Doppler effect inside of Unity for some reason. I don't know why you'd want this, but it's a thing. Anyway, back to my health UI. I just added these heart containers you can find throughout the world, and when you use them, your max health increases. The direction I end up going with the game will determine how I use these, but I imagine that these heart containers will either be rewards for fighting bosses, or you'll find them hidden throughout the world. I've been doing some testing for the health UI, and I wanted a better way to reduce my health that makes more sense than just pressing the spacebar. 
So I'm going to try and put in something in the game that's kind of like the opposite of a health potion. It'll be something that you can drink to reduce your health. I'm not sure if these will be in the final game, but maybe we'll find some use for them. And if you guys have any ideas, let me know. Uh, by the way, in the last video, someone asked me if I could make a time lapse of me making pixel art. So here you go. Hope you like it. So I added these poison potions into the game and they cause you to take damage and this is shown by the decreasing number of hearts. Using the health potions will heal you. I'm using a feature in Unity called scriptable objects for this, which are really useful for making custom items with different functionality. And a few more random things. I just updated the sprites for the trees and gave them shadows, so hopefully they look a little nicer now. And I added rocks into the game. Their colliders seem to be working, but I found this kind of funny bug where if you flip the sprite back and forth really quickly, then you can pass in between small gaps. The reason this happens is that because of the flipping animation you see when the player changes direction kind of takes advantage of the fact that this 2D game is really taking place on a plane in a 3D world. When you see the player's sprite flipping, this is what's actually happening. But when the player rotates, so does his collider, which is supposed to prevent him from going through solid objects. This allows him to slip through narrow openings. I honestly don't really know how I'm going to fix this right now, but it's something I'll have to work on. Worst case scenario, I may need to remove the sprite flipping animation from the game or find another way to handle it. Anyway, back to the inventory, I just added the ability for items to stack. So if you collect three of the same type of potion, they'll only take up one spot in the inventory. And in the bottom right, there's a little number that shows you how many of them you have. And everything can still be used as normal. Hey, remember how the main point of this game was supposed to be about protecting a fire? Yeah, well I finally decided I should probably add that in. So I made the sprite for it, and it took me so long to get the fire pit to a point where I was happy with it. But you might notice that the animation for the fire looks kinda awful. You might think it looks okay, but trust me, it's awful. So I scrapped that, and I started working with Unity's particle system. And if you don't know, Unity's particle system is really fun to use. My idea was to make an effect where the particles start transparent, and then they would turn orange and eventually fade into black, and then fade away. Then I tested the effect, but I think I might have added a little bit too much wind. It's not exactly what I was going for. That's a little better. There we go, I think that looks nice. And there you have it, an inventory system and the start to our fire. In the next video, I'll start working on gathering resources from the trees and rocks, and the ability to craft items and equipment. So you can subscribe if you want to see that. And thanks again for all the support on the last video. As of right now, I think I've responded to every comment I've gotten, and hopefully I can keep doing that in the future, but it's definitely getting harder as more comments start coming in. But I do appreciate it. And anyway, thanks for watching.